Hey guys, uh, what's up? So we are back. So um, so far we've been dealing with all of our data locally inside of that data, um, this data TypeScript file in here, okay? And that's okay for when you wanna do something, you know, when you're training and you wanna learn some stuff, you know, you can run it this way and that's okay. But obviously this is not the way that it will look like or it will work in professional environments. With professional environments, you're gonna need a server. You're gonna need some type of backend. And this backend is going to be doing whatever it is the backend developers do. But essentially, their ultimate goal is to send you an API with data. You're going to consume this API. And you're basically gonna, cons yeah, once you consume this API, you're gonna have all of these different pieces and this is what the API basically will look like, right? And then you're gonna cut, you're gonna grab all of these pieces of data that is coming from the API, and then you're gonna be able to display them on the screen. You're gonna be able to delete some of them, change them. And then whenever you delete anything, you need to send back an instruction to the server with the new formatted API that doesn't have the one that you deleted or, you, or the one that you change is gonna be updated, things like that, right? And then the information will be able to persist so like when someone else around the world, across the world, you know, refreshes the website, it will show up. Right now, if I did anything at all, if this thing was, um, if I was a, a able to delete something in here, it won't work because it's not persistent because everything is hard coded locally into this file inside the, um, inside the actual um, website, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a JSON server now this JSON server is something that is only basically, it's a mock, it's, it's mocking an API server. So it's mocking what an actual server will look like. And you can't really publish this to your hosting domain. You can really, you know, uh, send this to production. This is just for em 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 development, development purposes only, but it does a great job. And if you want to learn a little bit more about it, you can come over here and check it out and just basically look up, um, JSON server, and let me go ahead and make this a little bigger. So if you look up JSON server, and you're gonna see here, right here, what is this JSON server package npm? So you click on that, you can read a little bit, a little bit more about it, and it'll tell you basically how to get it started. Now, once you get it started out of the out of the box, it already it's already gonna give you these initial um, initial pieces of uh, API here to work with if you wanted to go ahead and, and use these for some reason. We're not, we have our own already. We have our own call tasks, right? But we're still going to use this JSON server, right? The only thing that I would tell you to do is don't do it globally, okay? Don't do it globally because you are you don't want this to run into issues in another application in your computer. So you wanna run this for just the application that you're running. It's very light. Uh, it's okay if you have multiple installments of this JSON server. Let's say you're doing five different websites, one in Angular, one in React, two in Vue, whatever. And you needed to have five install installations of all of these JSON servers in each one of the websites you have one. That's okay. There is so light, it's so small, uh, you, you know, you'd be fine. Um, so there's no need. The only thing that I like to do globally is things that are huge, like my CLI for Angular, um, Node.js itself, uh, a lot of things like that that are so huge. And I can, you know, I want it to be, you know, installed once and everyone can use it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our installation, which is this one here, and we're going to write just that, npm install. I'll just use the, the, the short version instead, npm i npm i and then json server and then that dash big s that's the same thing as saying dash dash save and I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna go through its magic and node.js is going to add that package and make it available to us okay all right so once that's done then i'm gonna go ahead and close this back up and yep and then in here what we're going to do let me go ahead and close this we're not going to use this for this video so i'm going to close that but i'm going to leave that one open actually 
we're gonna go to my package JSON file and make sure that it's there and it is right here okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script so that we can run this server okay so we're going to name this script server and what we're going to do to make sure that it runs is we're going to add this right here this instruction so um so we're going to add that there and then we're going to define i think by default it, it goes out to port 3000 if i miss if, if i remember correctly i think it goes automatically to four port 3000 but um we are okay so it's right so alternative ports okay there you go you can use any port that you want and instead of running it directly to the port 3000 i don't want to run it on port 3000 because i know that 3000 is a very common port for a lot of applications angular uses 4200 um react uses 3000 um for the regular uh, website port um so just because 3000 is so common i like to define my own so that way i don't run into any issues so i'm going to uh, 3000 5000 8000 all of these are very common so just use something that's completely different so i'm going to add this tag right here and it's going to run on port 3000 3004 is good 3004 is good and i'm going to go ahead and save that all right so now we're running out of i mean when you can have as many um um these things here what do you call it uh consoles terminals yes you can have as many terminals as you want but it's getting a little crowded so this one that we use for creating components and services we're just going to go ahead and then make sure that we use that in here because um we need one window to run our server all the time if our server is not running then this right here will compile but you won't be able to see the data so you need this one to run all the time so you can run the front end and then you need another one to run all the time with the back end so all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and npm run server because we created that script to run the server and when i hit enter it is going to do this you know it's going to run right and if you look now let me close all this stuff here if you look here at the very root it created a db json file right this is going to be our database where we're going to be creating um all of our code and remember what i said that it gave you um initially initially give you this stuff right here there they are right so I can use these right now if I wanted to. I can just make sure I can create a service like I just did and, and subscribe to this dbjson. And I can go ahead and start using this data if I wanted to. But that's not really what we want, right? We want to use task. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this comment and profile. We're not going to use that. And then we're going to name this tasks. 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 We're going to delete that as well. And then now we're going to go here and we're going to select all of our tasks that we have there copy that and go in there and paste them and if you've been following along everything should be fine because you should have double quotes on all the properties as slow as well as double quotes on the strings not double quotes on the booleans no double quotes on the integers either just on the strings and the properties all right so go ahead and save that as well so down here where you say when you see the resources you should see now that you have a resource called 3004 task this is our api for task and this is our main api for everything like the main resource for the whole thing so if i command click on that i should be able to see the API information, the data that I'm bringing, that I'm that the API is sending me. So this is a lot like what will happen when you um, when you subscribe to an API, a real API. It will be this right here will be called mydomain.com/api, and then it will say slash whatever the API data you get it back. So in this case, it will be tasks. 
right um, and then you'll be able to subscribe to this of course it will be it will be encrypted it will be um, it will have some type of token and, and you know some kind of encryption so that no one can subscribe to it you know without the right permission um, but there are a few a few open source APIs out there that are open to everyone one of them for example is YouTube okay um, YouTube has the, their API is open to everyone so if you wanted to I don't remember off the top of my head you could subscribe to the to the API to the YouTube API videos and get a list of every single video that exists in YouTube huge API huge immense but it is open um, they like it open they want to keep it open so that people can use it to show videos and some of their websites and stuff like that there is nothing really uh, to be encrypted there because it's not a super secure website so they don't care um, but for example oh actually even NASA has an open API where you can actually see real data of real projects that are being worked on and real um, deployments and launches and it's crazy stuff now again a bank for example or something of the government military things like that they have APIs as well everybody has API that's how data moves however their stuff will be encrypted and you won't be able to just log in and see people's accounts and money and balances from a bank or something like that so that's the difference so if your API has um, will need to be encrypted then there will be um, other steps besides this that you would need in order to get that API back but for right now this is the way that an API will look like at the most basic level okay so to get more information and more help beyond this on a on you know on being able being able to retrieve an API you will have to work uh, hand to hand with uh, with your server de server side developer he, he will tell you exactly what you need to make sure that you call your API um, so make sure that you run your API um, from the right place and most definitely most definitely most definitely will not be from a JSON server this is only for development purposes and it's fake it's fake stuff all right all right so hope I was clear about that now let's just just for the sake of it because we changed some stuff let's go ahead and run this and make sure that it runs and it does nothing's been affected all you do now is that you have access to that so now in next videos what we're gonna do is that we're going to basically get rid of this because we're not going to be using this anymore and instead we're going to be um, making sure that our tasks are reading from this DB JSON in that's gonna be done through the service obviously but we'll do that in the next one all right I'll see you guys later